there's a podcast where they talk about punk rock. It's not two guys stroking their cocks. It's two chicks with tits from opposite continents. They rarely check out new bands or rarely wear any pants. Shaving lady parts. They're not on the iTunes charts. Mabel Syndrome. Why am I still listening to Mabel Syndrome? Mabel Syndrome. Why am I still listening to Mabel Syndrome? Hey everyone, this is Kristen from Mabel Syndrome, and I'm without my co-host today. Brad, you don't know, but I usually have my co-host Jessica with me, and she had a family situation that she had to deal with, so I'm running solo today. Oh no. Um, but my, my special guest is Brad Logan of so many projects. We're going to touch on all of them, but thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Kristen. Yeah. Happy to, happy to be here. Awesome. Um, you were just saying you're heading out on tour. I am uh, on uh, uh, next week uh, with uh, I play bass in the adolescence and we're doing a, a tour with the circle jerks and negative approach, two of my all time, all time favorite bands. Um, so I'm pretty excited. Three of my all time favorite bands, actually, if you include the adolescence. And, right. And, uh, so I'm pretty excited about it. And, and it's the first touring I've done in a couple of years now. So um, are you nervous? Not now. I'm I'm pretty, you know, I'm excited about it now. I was, yeah. uh, you know, there was some anxiety. I, I don't think, you know, the anxiety was more, um, oh my God, you know, how am I going to leave to go anywhere? I have, you know, so much on my plate. I can't leave, yeah. you know, I can't leave town. You yeah. Know? And, and so that was the anxiety really. And, and, uh, um, oh my God, traveling, ugh, you know, and, and just being some old man complaining too. Mm -hmm. Um, but that passed after a couple of days. Now I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> yeah. You were probably just out of the routine of it. Like before it was just like going out on tour again and then staying home for so long. It probably is just feels that much bigger. It does. Right. It was, it was reversed, you know, pre pandemic and, and where I was gone all the time. And, and, um, yeah. uh, but now, you know, I've been home for a couple of years and I like touring and I love playing gigs, but you know, I also really love being home too. So, um, you know, that's, that, that was kind of a, uh, a thing I was introduced to, you know, um, uh, you know, as a result of, of, you know, everything that we all know about, right. For the past couple yeah. of years. So, yeah. yeah. Speaking about being home, um, Kristen, your wife is kind of helped, set this up a little bit. And I, she's, um, she's an amazing person. I've, I've know her just barely, I can't wait to meet her in person. Yeah, um, yeah. but you, um, since yesterday was Valentine's day, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit like about her and about how you guys met. Oh dear. You set me up. <laughs> well, um, what can I say about her? I mean, she, she is, um, you know, I mean, the love of my life, but, you know, we, we are, um, you know, couldn't be more opposite of, of, you know, personality wise and as people. And I think that's, you know, part of why it works is, is, you know, she's everything I am not. And, and, uh, um, and, uh, you know, uh, to me, that's very valuable. Right. And, and, uh, but she doesn't agree with, with, you know, everything I say and think and all my likes and, and musically or, you know, whatever artistically. And, and, um, and I love that, you know, she's her own person. Yeah. And, and, and so th that was very attractive to me. Um, uh, in the way we met was, you know, couldn't have been more random, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it's talked about in the, uh, in the architects of self-destruction book a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I was on, t you know, tour with another band, um, in between tours with my own bands, I would work as crew, you know, for, um, for various bands. And, and, uh, I was out on the road with this one band and, uh, you know, we had, um, some shows cancel in the Midwest and we ended up being, you know, staying in Lawrence, Kansas for three days. Right. Which is where she was living and where I met her. And, and, um, 
you know, I went into this record store that, that, that was there in the middle of, you know, the main street and, and, uh, and I just saw her there behind the counter and, and, um, you know, just, it, it was like really one of those like pow moments of like, Oh my God, who is this person? You know? And, and, uh, yeah. she was wearing this, you know, long sort of, um, you know, down to the, to the floor, um, you know, old, uh, 50s very brightly colored dress and you know just had this insane looking um you know floral arrangement of hair on her head you know and and um and I approached her and I you know um very awkwardly asked her if she had some you know uh record there you know as sort of an excuse to like oh my god I you know I want to talk to this person and she was like super like icy to me and I was just like ah oh, my god (laughs) did that make you like her more oh absolutely you know and i'm like who is this person and so you know um uh through the remainder of the days that we were there you know i I kept going back into the record store to see if she was there and she never was and and so the band that i was with played this venue that was next door to the record store on the last day and and uh and I just left a note under the door of the record store. I, one of the stagehands I was working with, I go, hey, you know, do you know the girl that works at the record store next door that looks like this? She's like, oh, yeah, that's my good friend, Kristen, and blah, 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 blah. So I, um, uh, I got a name and, and I did something very uncharacteristic. You know, I just left a note under the door of like, you know, um, hey, Kristen, you don't know me. My name's Brad. Um, you know, uh, I'd love to say hi to you sometime. And I left an email address, you know, and, and really I just, um, you know, had zero expectations of maybe anything other than a, uh, you know, a conversation, you know, and, and, you know, get to know this person. And, and, uh, I wasn't dating, you know, and, and, uh, I wasn't yeah. looking for anything, you know, well, and you didn't know if she was single either. Right. And, and, you know, I didn't want anything, but to get to know this, like, in, you know, insane, you know, beautiful, insane, icy person, like, oh, there's got, you know, there's something there. Right. And, yeah. and, um, and so she wrote me back like three weeks later, like, you know, I got an email, like, who is that? You know, she thought it was like a, you know, some piss take that her friends were pulling on her. And, and uh, yeah, she I says in the book that it's uncharacteristic of her too. to, to, she t- kind of just took a risk and responded. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so this was pre internet, you know, and, and, uh, the, um, I don't even remember what it was. Um, maybe you're probably like, back. here's my AOL. I did. I told her I'm in this, these bands, you know, and you can look, you know, you can look me up on these records that are probably in your record store. That's because there right, was no, right. yeah, there was no website or, or, you know, it was pre like Facebook or any of that. And yeah. I'm like, I, I promise you, I'm not a psycho. You can, I'm in this band and, you know, there are people that know me and, and yeah. um, she just still thought I was a psycho. And so, <laughs> but and then the rest, I guess is history. I, I, you know, right. I don't think either of us thought we would ever be together. And then neither of us ever thought we would last more than a year, you know? And, yeah. uh, and, and so here we are, you know, 20 years down the road. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. That's yeah. sweet. I like that. Um, you mentioned the book and I have it here. And I just wanted to hold it up for people that are looking. It's Architects of Self-Destruction, the Oral History of Leftover Crack. What was your idea to why write a book? Oh, um, well, because there was just, you know, um, and, and I, I, this is, you know, I assume the same for any band, right? Any touring band, there was just so many insane, um, you know, uh, road stories and, and, um, just the personalities of the people in the band and, and, you know, everybody that we interacted with. And, and, um, uh, to me, you know, the band was just so unique in, in a lot of ways that, uh, and so many unbelievable things had happened up to that point. I'm like, you know, um, you know, no one would believe these tales and, ah, uh, you know, somebody has got to document this and I should write a, someone should write a book. That's how it's right. Right. You know, just driving around and ha ha ha, someone should write a book. And, you know, um, and then when nobody wrote a book, I'm like, well, fuck, I'm going to write the book, you know, and, and, yeah. um, uh, and so it, it was really that simple. You know, I had no experience in, in being, you know, a writer of books, 
for uh, anything like that. Um, you know, assembling, uh, you know, interviewing people, anything like that. It was just a, you know, a, a, I decided to do it and, and did it, you know? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And it's, it's inter, you know, it's parts of different people's take on different things, right? So that it's, it, it's interesting because it'll be your take on a situation and then Sturgeon's take on a situation and then Alex's take on a situation or whatever it is. So, um, how did you get their input? Did you, um, interview them, uh, you know, orally, or did you write out some things to them? You know, I, 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 I really always enjoyed that format for a, a book, especially, you know, about a band or any sort of, you know, um, um, you know, setting where a lot of people were involved. And, and I had read some books prior to that, you know, um, please kill me and the Edie Cedric book and, and, you know, other ones, uh, um, uh, that had that format. And I thought it was just such a great way to present, um, a story where, you know, because what's true, right. Everybody has a different perspective. Everybody has a different experience, you know, uh, that's unique to them. And you aren't afraid to say that in the book too. Like someone will chime in and say, well, that's not how I remember it. <laughs> yes. And and that's one of the things that's, that's really awesome about doing that is just, you know, contradictory, you know, statements and stories right after each other, you know, and, and, yeah. um, you know, because we all, or at least I like to think that the way I'm looking at this thing is the right way to look at it, but, you know, is it the right way to look at it? Right. You know, in my opinion, but it's just my, you know, my opinion. So, uh, um, I, I knew I wanted to do that kind of book in, instead of just like, you know, one person's tale of all this stuff, which is just really boring to me. And, and, um, um, plus I knew that the cast of characters surrounding the band was just, you know, <laughs> just some of the weirdest, greatest, you know, most awesome, insane people ever. And, and, um, uh, and yeah, you know, I got, um, you know, I enlisted John to help me interview people and, uh, John Gentili was a journalist, um, and he had experienced, you know, writing and being a journalist. I had no experience you know, as a journalist or, um, or or any writings other than, you know, journals or songwriting. And, and, um, and, you know, it's like, uh, I I don't even remember how John and I met, but I knew him and and I knew that he was a writer and I'm like, Hey, you want to help me write this book? And I asked a few people to help me write it and they were just not interested in, and, uh, and he was, (laughs) he was like, Oh, sounds like fun. Yeah. But I knew that, um, it was going to be a big job just interviewing people. And then, uh, you know, um, so I did a combination of in person, you know, holding people hostage uh, um, or email some of it or on the phone, you know, on speakerphone with a digital recorder next to the phone. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, um, you know, transcribing it and, and uh, uh, you know, editing it and all that stuff it, that, I mean, I just, I love the whole process. I love the work. I love the, the, the interviewing. I love the, you know, the shit work, the transcribing, the editing uh, and fitting the pieces together like a puzzle, you know, right. um, constructing it. Uh, like, I just love the work. It's not, um, you know, uh, to me, it doesn't work. It's, it's a, it's a puzzle, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, I really dug it and, and, uh, you know, some people didn't want to be interviewed, you know, uh, some people, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, didn't want to talk to me, didn't want to talk about the band. And, and I knew that, I knew that from the onset, the band, uh, you know, always had, you know, a very divided, very polarized, um, uh, polarizing presence, you know, either people wanted, you know, the band dead or they had grudges or vendettas or were, were just sold their souls, you know, yeah. for the, for the music. And, and, uh, which I thought was interesting in itself, you know, um, uh, to, it, you know, to be it, it, in that setting, I never, um, felt like I was the creator of that. I was just, you know, um, an, an observer, right. Even though I'd been mm-hmm. in the band since the onset, mm-hmm. um, I still felt like, uh, um, you know, like an observer of it and, and just, yeah. you know, watching but the, it. But wasn't there that a time, sense. wasn't there a time, I feel like I read that you kind of, you worked, you worked with the band and then you joined the band. Yes. Well, uh, yeah, right. That's how it started. Um, I, I worked at um, 
I was working at Hellcat Records, right, which was Tim from Rancid's label, and and um, uh, you know, I worked on the the Choking Victim record um, with Tim and with with Hellcat, and that's how I got to know you know Sturgeon and um, you know all of those guys you know around that band. And yeah. then when Sturgeon was putting a new band together, he just asked me if I wanted to play guitar. Um, and I was already in it, it, you know, had been in, you know, was doing F minus and, and other bands. And, and I was like, sure, you know, it was that easy. It wasn't any big deal. I didn't ever think it would go anywhere, you know, okay. um, never thought. We'd- but you knew Sturgeon, you knew that he was polarizing. You knew that he was complex, but you didn't, you were just like, yeah, this sounds great. Like, oh, there wasn't a, a second thought about that really. Well, not at the time. I mean, at the yeah. time, it, there wasn't, um, you know, at the time, he was just this kid from New York City. You know, he was like 20 mm-hmm. years old, and, and mm-hmm. there was no reputation that preceded him. There was there was no history of this or that. He was just a kid, you know, a kid from the Lower East Side living in Sea squat And, uh, um, and I thought he was hilarious. You know, I thought he was a funny kid. I thought he had some, uh, uh, he was a great songwriter. He had some twisted ideas, you know, um, uh, we, you know, we liked a lot of the same music and, and it was that simple, you know, um, uh, I didn't think anybody, uh, you know, I didn't even put any thought into whether anybody would care about the band or the music or any of that kind of stuff. There was no thought at all. Yeah. Cause people would ask me to play in their bands, you know, that would happen to me all the time. And I, I played in, you know, many bands for, you know, for one show or recording or, or this yeah. or that, you know, so that, that wasn't unusual. And it's like, Oh yeah, I like this kid. Sure. But, you know, hell yeah. I'd love to. Mm-hmm. And he sent, he had sent me a cassette of some uh, new songs that he was working on. He was living in um, like rural Montana, I think. And, and mm-hmm. sent me a cassette of, of these tunes and, and they were great. You know, yeah. um, I was a fan of choking victim, that record. And, you know, and it was really different than, than what was, you know, anything that was happening at Epitaph, you know, um, or Hellcat at the time, you know, it was a lot of things, right. A lot of weird things that shouldn't be in the same room together, you know, Mm -hmm. metal and ska and, you know, what the fuck is going on, but it worked. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. As you know, as you guys are forming the band and, and the early stages of the band and everybody's coming and going, but you always, you've always stayed there and you, you seem to, from what I gather in the book, had a very level head about the whole thing where people are coming and going and doing all this stuff and you're sticking by you, you, you know, I think you left a show once or something and walked off and, and, um, you know, kind of maybe quit at that moment, but then probably got back in the van and went to the next town or whatever it was. But, um, but you always pushed through it. Is that kind of who you are? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know who I am, but I, I know that, um, you know, it's a complex situation. I mean, <clears throat> I think that, you know, a, I was used to being in chaotic situations and it, it didn't start that way. Right. It did not start that way, but um, growing up, you know, the way I grew up and, and, and the people I grew up with, you know, um, and then the years that I spent myself, uh, you know, um, you know, on the streets and, and, and whatnot. I mean, you know, um, there wasn't a whole lot that, that just surprised or shocked me about in in any sort of chaotic situations. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was kind of detached from it and, and, so, uh, to me, there's, you know, there's good chaos and there's bad chaos. You know, the good chaos is, is, um, you know, in the name of fun, right. Or, uh, in, in, in the name of or art I or suppose. art, right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where people aren't getting hurt, you know, uh, uh, and then there's bad chaos, which is, you know, the opposite of that where, um, you know, people are, are, um, uh, are getting, you know, damaged from it and, and destroyed. And, and, uh, um, and so when, you know, that started to flip, in my opinion, from good chaos to bad chaos. Um, and we talked about this the other day, I think, you know, part of, 
uh, you know, my damage uh, as a person is thinking that, um, uh, you know, when things started to, you know, go bad and stay bad, uh, you know, I thought that, um, you know, I could fix things, you know, and, yeah. uh, oh, you know, I, 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 you know, I have some experience, uh, you know, pulling myself out of, out of, uh, you know, this situation or that situation. Um, and, and so I can help this, you know, I can help turn it around and I could fix things and, uh, um, you know, and it's going to end up being okay. And, uh, um, and that was rather, you know, big headed and self-righteous of me to think, you know, that, that I could, you know, that I could change anything really, except for myself or my own behavior, you know, um, as far as, you know, I don't have any control over people. You know, I don't have any control over situations, but like, oh, this, you know, um, uh, you know, um, it, does that answer that question? Yeah. Yeah. Was, was the death of Brandon a big, a big, like kind of turning point in terms of, you know, it seemed like things were kind of under control. And then all of a sudden that was, that was a big shock to the system. Um. No, I mean, you know, that wasn't, I mean, it sucked, you know, it was yeah. horrible. And, and, uh, you know, we found him, you know, and, and, uh, you know, Ezra, you know, I was standing right there next to Ezra when he was giving him mouth to mouth, you know, and, and, um, you know, we were there for every minute of it. It wasn't this thing we just heard about, you know, and it fucking sucked. Um, at the same time, uh, by that point, there were many, many people in my life that had died from, from, uh, drug overdoses or, uh, in, in drug or alcohol related car wrecks or, or, you know, by their own hand through, you know, um, suicide or whatever. And, and so that wasn't anything, um, that was out of the ordinary, mm-hmm. you know, um, as far as that went. And, and, uh, I would rather have that not happened, you know, I mean, I, I don't advocate, um, uh, you know, um, people, uh, you know, I don't take drugs, I don't drink. Right. But like, I don't tell people what to do with their life. You know, it's like, it's, it's none of my business what somebody wants to do with their life as far as any of that goes or as far as anything else goes. Right. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, that comes with the territory, you know, if you're going to fuck around with that that is a thing that can happen. And, and I've seen that happen more often than not. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, we were all pretty torn up about it. And actually I didn't know if the band was going to continue. None of us did right. really, yeah. you know, at that point, but it ended up continuing and, and uh, um, you know, we pushed ahead and um, you know, so. Yeah. And at one point, so you, you just mentioned that you don't, that you're um, that you don't, engage in drugs and alcohol and things. And so, um, and that was at some point while you were a member of leftover crack that you got sober. No, that was before. Oh, it was before. Okay. So you were sober the entire time during that band. Yeah. When I stopped doing, you know, uh, taking drugs and, 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 you know, drinking, I was a nobody, (laughs) nobody from nowhere doing nothing. Okay. And, and, uh, um, uh, and I'm still a nobody from nowhere doing nothing, but you know, it, it was very, um, yeah, my life, it wasn't working out well for me. You know, I spent a, a lot of years, uh, having it, you know, on the, on the bad side of it, you know, yeah. and having it not work out. Uh, yeah. so, uh, um, that was my experience, you know, uh, but I, then I, seeing friends kind of go down that similar path, I would think you empathize with that. I do empathize with it. Yes. But I also know there's nothing you can do. There was nothing Mm. anybody could do for me until I wanted to do something for myself. There was absolutely Mm -hmm. nothing anybody could do. Mm -hmm. You know, all of the help that people were offering or or begging me to, you know, um, uh, to get help. My parents, my, you know, my mother, my friends, you know, my sisters and, um, just none of it mattered until, um, I was completely, uh, stripped of everything, you know, and completely crushed under it, um, and, and totally alone, 
that, you know, um, that I decided there was just a tiny voice in the back of my head, um, to maybe try things a different way, you know? Yeah. And, uh, um, uh, for myself, there was nobody that cared anymore. (laughs) You know, well, if I could get, you know, if I can just quit doing this, then I have, can do this. It was like, I didn't want anything but to, um, be out of that hell. You know, I didn't care what happened to me. I just wanted to be out of that hell, you know? Yeah. And, and, um, uh, if I could just have a little job and, and a place to live or something that would be like beyond my wildest dreams, you know? Yeah. And so um, do you have that conversation with people that you're worried about or do you just not even bother anymore? Have you ever tried that? <laughs> <laughs> I have. How it doesn't that, do much. Yeah. How'd that work? Right. Yeah. Not so great. No. Against my better judgment, I've had tried to have that conversation with people. Yeah. Um, against knowing what I know about myself, you know, mm-hmm. and right. And, and it just falls, you know, it's like, great. That's great. Well, you maybe know, well, it's, and, and maybe there's a selfish element to it, but I always feel like at least I tried, like, you know, at, at least I, if something happens, at least I tried, like, it's probably not going to do anything. Obviously they need to, you can lead a horse to water, whatever there, you know, but, um, but I do feel like sometimes at least I tried. I've told myself that too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think that, um, you know, I, I always knew, you know, when I was at my worst that there were alternatives to it. People didn't yeah. even have to tell me I knew, you know? Um, so I, you know, uh, in the end, I mean, really, it, you know, I just try and, um, you know, continue to do what I'm doing and be there if somebody needs help. You know, I don't yeah. need to sell it, right? Um, because it just doesn't fucking work. It doesn't work on people like me, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, you know, uh, but I try and to continue to um, to not go down those roads, uh, you know, with drugs and alcohol, let's say. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, um, I'm not very uh, vocal about it. But people have asked me, you know, like, hey, I noticed there's this raging fucking chaos going on. And what's up with you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and maybe at that point, you know, we could talk about it. Right. But but um, and I could, you know, if I can ever be of help, I'm, you know, that's my like job is to be mm-hmm. of help. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, to help people out who are in trouble, especially along those lines. But I know yeah. that, you know, that it, it, it's a par you know, you can't, you know, you can't make somebody do something that I want to fucking do. You can't all the, right. and, and this right. is the story of, you know, that question you were asking me earlier and, and, uh, and I tried and, and, you know, I, I, I try, I wasn't listening to my, to, to my own advice and I, tr- you know, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to help. I'm going to make it better. And it almost killed me. Really, at the end of the day, it it almost killed me. Literally, mm-hmm. almost killed me. You know, um, trying to keep that band together. Is that what you're saying? Uh, trying to control situations that were uncontrollable. You know, mm-hmm. and and um, you know, uh, help people that didn't want to be helped. Right. You know. And it, yeah. it's not just confined to the band. I mean, I see that in my daily life all the time. You know, the band was just, <clears throat> you know, another example of it. But it certainly wasn't uh, unusual from any other situations that, that I see going on at any given time. <laughs> yeah. You know, like we, you know, politics, you know, anything like that. It's like, you know, um, what can I do, you know? and And so... Uh, in the end, uh, and I mean, I knew what I wanted to do for a decade, you know, um, but it took me about 10 years to just walk away, man. I just had to walk away. Yeah. You know, that was the only yeah, thing I could do. Let's talk about that. So, um, so you made a public post that you left the band Leftover Crack, um, which I imagine was, you said, took 10 years, basically, to get yourself to do. Um, how did... Did that feel instantly like a weight was lifted, I would imagine? No. Or did you feel sad? How, how did you feel? 
yeah, it, um, yeah, it was, <laughs> didn't feel like a weight was lifted, you know, no. it was, it was like leaving a, uh, um, you know, a long-term relationship, you know, uh, it, it, it was very sad, you know, and, yeah. and, uh, on a lot of levels, um, you know, the, 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 the ending for me was filled with, with confusion, um, and, and sadness and self pity. And, uh, uh, it wasn't pretty, you know, but it, <clears throat> for me, it, it was the, uh, only choice, you know, it was yeah. the only choice. Mm. And, and so, um, um, yeah, it took a long time. It took a long time for me to see that that was, the, yeah. you know, that that was the only choice. Who but, helped you make that choice? Like talking with your wife, friends, family, who like, did anyone help you with that? I talked to a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. You know, but in the end it was like the same with, with like, you know, the toxic substances that I'd lived on for years in the end, the, the, you know, the choice had to be mine alone, you know, <clears throat> and that's what it was, you know? came to me in the middle of the fucking night or whatever, whatever. Right. I just got up and I did it, you know, one day. And, and, and that statement that I posted wasn't any sort of uh, statement to, to be like, um, you know, I wasn't trying to say anything or, or look at me or any of that, any fucking thing like that. You know, it, it was, I didn't want to answer any fucking questions about it. You know, here's this, and this is this and comments turned off. And if you have any questions, refer to that. Yeah. You know, right. it, that it's all in there, you know? Yeah. So. <clears throat> well, I thought I, I wanted to share for my listeners too, for our fans that um, I did interview Sturgeon once and um, it, it was a great experience. I went to a leftover crack show um, at um, somewhere in, in OC and, and um I think it was the glass house. Does mm. that sound right? Yeah. There's a glass house here. <laughs> a few years yeah. ago, two or three lots years ago. Lots of glass houses here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I went on the bus and, and interviewed Sturgeon and we had a, an amazing conversation for, for about an hour, hour and a half. And um, We had a bus? Alex, Couldn't have been hard. Yeah. Bus. We went up on the bus. We never had a yeah, bus. Yeah, we didn't. <laughs> he went on someone else's bus. Oh, no, no. It was definitely your guys' bus. Really? Yeah. Yep. That's weird. Yeah, because so he on. went back to his bunk and he got his puppets, <laughs> which I'm sure you know about. Um, and he was eating garlic out of the fridge, like just raw garlic. Um, and yeah, we we had we had a great conversation. Sounds, we talked to sounds pleasant. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was, you know, we, yeah, we talked about lots of things and, and he was charming and, and kind and, and nice. And, and, um, Alec came on for a little bit too. And we talked with him and, um, about their friendship from growing up and, and lots of things. And I was really excited to release the episode and I was in the middle of editing the episode and some things came out online, um, that I didn't feel comfortable with that, sure. um, that he had done. And I had to make the decision to just squash the whole thing. So I had, you know, two hours with Sturgeon that I spent and then um, hours of editing that I had done and squashed the whole thing because um, I felt like for me, um, not knowing him very well and not knowing the situation very well. But when something comes out about a person that hits you wrong, that you're like, well, this is where my line is. Right. So mm -hmm. I felt like that was where my line was. And I didn't feel comfortable putting his interview up on um, our website, up on our podcast. Um, and so that was the event for me. And so was there something for you that made you finally pull the plug? Uh, you mean any one incident that maybe pull the plug? No, I mean it was a, no. you know it, it was a um a combination of things you know that were all consistent 
with how things were going for a long time. Yeah. Okay. You know? uh, I think that <clears throat> the one thing that if there was any one sort of incident, the one realization I came to was um, I was either going to <clears throat> put a rope around my neck or uh, go to a place mentally I wasn't going to be able to come back from, you know. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that was the deciding factor as far as any severity of the incidents. You know, I mean, it, it you know, um, you know, it was constant chaos for a long time. Right. And, uh, um, you know, I can only live in that for, I guess, my my threshold of pain. I have a high tolerance for it. But my threshold of it was, you know, um, I guess it'd be 10 years from when I started saying, man, you know, I'm out of here to when I actually did, you know. Now, um, I, I, I mean, you know, um, you know, a band is also more than, you know, one person, too. And there were, you know, um, uh, to me, a band is a... You know, I don't care if, if there's like, you know, one person's writing all the songs or, uh, you know, somebody's the leader, this and that. It's like, you know, it's a combination of people that make up a band. So <clears throat> um, I th that situation, as much as it was detrimental in a lot of ways, there was also a lot of beauty in it, too. And I was working with some very unique and very talented and wonderful people and, and was crossing paths with um uh some people that that were um uh just you know really fucking wonderful people um so there was that uh, you know um going on too within me right it's like you know this isn't all uh you know it wasn't all just black or white like it's all just fucking misery it wasn't like that you know uh, and the other people that I was playing with in the band, you know, um, some great, you know, that I know there were a lot of people in and out of the band, but some very, very far more talented than me, you know, I'm just a fucking hack, but uh, there were, you know, very talented people in and out of that band, you know, songwriters and musicians and artists, you know, um, and other bands that we toured with and, and the labels that, that we worked with, um, you know, so, um, I don't know. Does that answer your question? I kind of went off on a tangent. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. It's it's a really tough. It's a really tough thing to talk about. And and I think um, if I I don't I'm it just don't want to speak for you. You know the, the the fucking bad shit just started to outweigh the good shit, and you know, and it just got too shitty for too long. You know? Yeah. And uh, you know, if it's not going to fucking change, I'm out. I'll catch you fucking later. I have my own problems my own personal problems to deal with and I'm going to go fucking work on those, you know, even if I never play in another band ever again, I'm going to go work on my stuff that, cause that's, you know. Yeah. Do you think that um, there's enough help for bands out there in terms of mental health? And um, I've been, I've been told by several people that like, you know, on, on these big cruises that, ba that bands, are doing these days or whatever, there'll be um, AA meetings on the cruise for, for musicians and stuff. And so there's, there's some of those, there's music cares, there's some other organizations out there that address um, all sorts of things that go on with musicians, but it doesn't seem like there's enough. Um, when I was going to shows, there wasn't any, you know, um, there wasn't anything like that, you, you know, um, people didn't talk about having like um, mental health issues or, you know, depression or feeling suicidal or, you know, um, I mean, I guess they did, but it wasn't like, um, I know my own feelings about it was like, I didn't want to like talk about those things and seem and, and come off being weird in front of people, you know, like, you know, I'm depressed. I feel like fucking killing myself, you know? And, and, uh, um, you know, so there was, uh, in, in the community resources for those things were, um, you know, they were inaccessible. We didn't know about them. You know, there, it just seemed like it was, um, you know, way out of reach, you know, like, oh, 150 bucks an hour to go to a psychologist, you know, and, and, uh, 
It's like, what the fuck? So <clears throat> I think, you know, having, um, you know, uh, and Music Cares is great, man. I think M- Music Cares has, has helped a lot of people I know, you know, uh, that were in serious trouble, um, as well as, you know, me. And, and um, I think just keeping that, those things visible and, and uh, um, the, the resources uh, for those types of things, um, you know, uh, keeping the vis- vis- <clears throat> visibility as high as, as we can, you know, at the, at the shows, you know, the venues, the, um, uh, um, you know, a- any way that that can be done to, uh, you know, point people into the, in, in those directions as a step, uh, you know, step in the right direction. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know, again, you can't, uh, you know, you can't force somebody to get help. Right. But at least, you know, here's a place you can go, you know, here's a place you can go discreetly. You don't even have to tell anybody you're doing it. You right. Know? For free sometimes. For free. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. To please for free. You know, people who are volunteering to help people, people who have been there, you know, um, volunteering to help other people uh, that have been there. And, 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 uh, uh, I think that that is something that, you know, um, and, and I'm seeing a lot more of it done these days and it's pretty fucking cool. You know, the punk community yeah. and, and, you know, uh, um, the music, uh, industry, uh, you know, at large, it, it's, it's much more, um, talked about and out there. Um, yeah. it, you know, at least more so than when I was a kid, there was nothing. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Punk, um, punk I think music we- and, and the gigs were, were the escape. That was the therapy, you know? That was the therapy and the escape from the parents, from the, from the, the, you know, the dysfunctional family, from the, uh, um, uh, you know, from the world outside that didn't understand, you know, that didn't understand that you didn't even understand yourself, you know, Mm -hmm. and here was a place to go where you didn't have to fucking explain yourself, you know, and you could just go there and just be whatever fucking weirdo you were, you know. Right. And be Um, accepted. And and, be accepted. But that didn't make the problems inside go away, right? You know, here was a place to go, but the you know it didn't just poof like all of a sudden you love yourself now. You know, it just doesn't work that way, right? Right. <clears throat> I see mental health um, trending positively in the punk rock community, but I also see support of women and victims um, trending well in the punk rock community, and I think that one of the reasons that people are afraid to support Sturgeon right now is because there are some accusations out there against him. Um, And I'm just wondering, is that something that's talked about in the music community among artists? Like we're going to, you know, it kind of hit fans first almost like we're going to not support these artists that have accusations against them. Um, do you think it's hit the actual artists yet that say we're not going to we're not going to support our friends that have accusations against them we're going to you know that kind of thing has has that been talked about in the punk rock community from what you know uh, I don't know you know I don't know um I I I have to agree with you that that definitely I'm seeing a lot more support um I mean, but I, you know, this is from the viewpoint of a, a you know, of, of a fucking old white male, you know? So, you know, what do I know? I mean, it seems to me like, um, uh, you know, that, that, uh, the awareness is out there and, and it's, it's, it's something that's talked about, <clears throat> you know, on a, on a public level, um, uh, you know, but I mean, you would know better than I would, you know, I mean, I, you know, is it, I mean, is it, is it, uh, you know, how do you feel about it? I think is a better better question, you know, what, you know, it, it, it doesn't, um, you know, women in, in music have always been in my life. That's just, you know, the way it's always been for me since my very first shows and bands and, and, you know, bands that I liked and, you know, I grew up with sisters and, and, you know, very strong women in my family. And, and so, that's just always been a part of my life. So, yeah. you know, I don't know if I'm, you know, qualified to even like, you know, comment on that. Like what the fuck do I know? You know? Yeah. And, and, and so, um, uh, thinking about those things has always been a part of my life and, and talking mm. about those things and, and, uh, addressing right. those things has always been a part of my life. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but you would know better than I would if that's like, you know, what's being talked about, if that, if, if that actually translates to a reality, you know, right. That, right. That, you know, I mean, do you feel more comfortable, um, you know, in, in the community and, and at shows, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, do, you know, how do you feel? Well, I'm, I'm one of the only women that I personally know of my, of my female friends that like punk rock. I'm, I'm probably the only one that has not been drugged at a show. Um, I have not been groped at a show. Um, so I've had positive experiences, but just recently I was at a show and I was trying to message my friend there all night and I didn't know where she went. And then she messaged me the next day from the hospital because she had been drugged. Um, and I feel like it's something that that we don't talk about enough, but it but I do feel like it's trending in the right direction. Um, and I hope that some more organizations like Music Cares and things like that um, kind of step up and, and keep having conversations around these issues. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't think that it was confined to just the punk community. It, it was just like, you know, it's, it's our society at large, man. It was like the same shit that was going on in high school and just, you know, um, you know, it's, it's like, and, and then to see that sort of stuff, you know, um, I don't know, you know, yeah, uh, it's hard. It's hard to see it in our community though. Cause sometimes I don't know about you, but I feel like in punk rock, like they're my people, they're my brothers, they're my sisters, and they're, you know, and I, I want to feel safe um, going to shows, and I want to feel like everyone has my back. If someone groped me, I want to run up to the band and be like, get this fucker out of here, you know, whatever. Mm. Um, I think, and I just, I'm sorry to cut you yeah. off, please continue. No, I, I just, I'm just glad that it's trending in that, in that direction, but I, I just was wondering if artists feel it as well. Because we, we feel it, I think, as fans, that it's being talked about more, believe women, abusers are being called out, um, accusations are being made about people. And I just was wondering if it's kind of infiltrating artist world as well. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, I mean, I guess it depends on, on you know, the artists, right, and, and the people. But uh, certainly the pack I run with, you know, um, you know, it's very uh, open and, and talked about and, and you know mm -hmm. it's very real situations mm -hmm. you know yeah um so yeah I, I, you know i can <laughs> i can only answer for a small microcosm you know of, of the people out there but um uh yeah i think it is you know i agree good yeah yeah um so to change the subject from something that's super tough, but, and well, I guess that's going to be tough too, but um, you took um, a role in the adolescence recently mm. and um, I never had the opportunity to meet Steve Soto. I've, I've heard amazing things. I, I, I was at punk rock bowling a couple years ago um, when the adolescents played and people were crying and, it, you know, so I just was wondering if you'd, Tell me about him a little bit. Like, what what was it? What was it about him that was so captivating to people? Steve, Steve was like, you know, he was just a, a you know, a genuinely like nice guy, man. I mean, he he, uh, um, you know, he was just a good soul, man. You know, whatever that means, he was a nice guy, you know, and and uh, um. And, and he had been, you know, um, especially a guy who had been, you know, in the trenches as long as he had been, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, adolescents, you know, at, at that point, we're coming up on, on, you know, 40 year anniversary and, and, um, you know, in the fucking trenches, man. And he was still yeah. like a, just a decent, nice human being. And, uh, and, and I think that's what, uh, you know, and also being incredibly, you know, talented, gifted, you know, musician, songwriter, arranger, um, yeah. you know, and, but that's like, I think the thing that was, you know, attractive, uh, you know, um, and attracted people to him and, you know, was that he was still, you know, just very approachable, fucking nice guy, you know, down, yeah. to, you know, and down to earth. And, you know, he was, um, you know, uh, well beyond legendary status and was just like, 
super approachable, down to earth, nice guy, you know, with a great yeah. sense of humor. Yeah. And uh, that's awesome. So those are all the things that I loved that I loved about him, you know, and and uh, um, I was on, you know, uh, the last tour that he did with the adolescents. I, I, you know, I just happened to be uh, riding along with him, uh, you know, driving the van and selling merch. And, you know, he called me out of the blue and, and was like, hey, you know, we're going to do this East Coast run. And, you know, you want to come along and sling merch. And I was like, hell, yeah, that sounds like fun. So I jumped in the van and, and, uh, um, you know, we would room, we, him and I were rooming together and, you know, we, they'd play the show and, you know, we'd go back to the hotel and, you know, be up, you know, laughing like, you know, we were 15, you know, shooting the shit, you know, till four in the morning every night and, and, uh, laughing our asses off. And, and, uh, uh you know, in the, uh, you know, we played Boston, right. You know, uh, um, uh, in, you know, New York city and a few other places. And, and then, uh, you know, I took them to the airport, dropped them off. I stayed in New York and, and, uh, you know, a few days later, I, I, um, you know, I, I was thumbing through Facebook and somebody had posted that he passed away and I was like, what, you know, uh, it, it was like, you know, when you, you see something like that, your brain cannot just compute, you, you know, you can't, you know, uh, um, you're like, but I just saw him. I was just with him. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, like when I, you know, I can equate it to watching the, the World Trade Center fall down. It's like, this is not really happening. This cannot be happening. It, it, you know, and it was the same sort of thing. It's like, wait, what? No, this is a hoax. I was just with him right. two fucking days ago. He's fine. Yeah. You know, um, and I made some calls and, and you know, sure enough, um, you know, he passed away in his sleep and, and, uh, um, uh, and so, uh, you know, that the band had, you know, a bunch of commitments still like, uh, show wise and tour wise. And, and they asked a few people, um, you know, they wanted to fulfill the commitments because that's the kind of band they were, you know, it's kind of guy Steve was, you know, they didn't cancel things. Right. You know, and, and, um, uh, he was a fucking warrior, you know, and, and, uh, um, so they asked me, I was one of the people they asked and I wasn't the only person they asked, but I was the <laughs> the guy with the most, you know, time available time. Right. And, and so, uh, um, I said yes. And, and I had about, you know, two weeks to, you know, before the, there was a tour of Europe that they needed to do. And, and, uh, okay. they sent me about 40 or 50 songs to learn in like two weeks. Here you go, wow. buddy. You know, you know. <laughs> It's like, what? Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, there was nobody to show me these songs because, you know, to show me his parts, right? Because only he knew his parts. And, and, and you know, <laughs> he's a, you know, a great bassist and, and musicians far better than me. So I was like struggling, you know, to like listen to these things and learn them and try and get them right. And I was super intimidated, you know, by the whole thing. Yeah. Nervous as hell. And, uh, um, and I, <laughs> and I remember the first show was in Germany and, and right before we played, Tony leaned over to me and he just went 40 years, man, legacy, just fucking with me. Right. You know? Yeah. Cause I was like, Oh fuck. You know? Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. He knew I was like super nervous about it. You know, it's like, um, stepping into, you know, uh, to stand in. And, and that's what I consider myself is I'm standing in for my friend, you know, it's his band, it's Steve's band and Tony's band. And, and, uh, you know, I'm standing in for him. Right. And, and, uh, um, that's how, that's how it feels still. That's how it feels. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, he, he can't make these shows and I'm standing in for him and, and, you know, I'm trying to do my best to, to honor him as a punker. You know, the man was a punk rocker and, and, you know, and, you know, give it my best to go out there and be a fucking punker, man, you know? And, and, um, and so that's what I try and do. I make tons of mistakes. I'm not the best musician, you know? Uh, um, um, but I love the band, you know, and I love him. So, you know. That's awesome. And, um, finally, I, I wanted to ask about the new, uh, the punk rock garage sale, the mm -hmm. ear damage. That sounds so fun. What was, how did that come about? Uh, 
that was, um, you know, that, that was just a, um, uh, yeah, for, for those who don't know, uh, I've started a, Kristen and I, uh, have started a, uh, record swap slash underground art market, uh, in San Pedro, uh, called ear damage. And, um, and it's because we're, you know, we're both weirdo, uh, I, you know, I'm a weirdo collector and, and music fan. Um, what do you collect? Oh, <laughs> I collect comic books. I collect records. I collect posters. I collect weird, uh, you know, trinkets and memorabilia. Um, gear, I don't really collect because, you know, music gear, because that's just, you know, I guess it's all kind of an expensive hobby, but, um, uh, you know, I, tr- I like to trash dig, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, um, uh, so, um, it was a way to, uh, um, you know, I had a friend who had an empty warehouse and, and it's like, Oh man, you know, it'd be great, you know, to, to use it. You know, I asked him if I could use it for this thing, you know, a couple, <clears throat> twice a month, we're going to do it. And, um, you know, and it's a way to mingle with other, you know, collector weirdos and bizarro people. And, and, and that's what it's going to be, you know, uh, yeah. uh, people who do people make... sign up to join in. Like, yes, there's a website. Okay. Uh, if you live in California, it's uh, www.eardamage.net, and and you can sign up to, um, you know, to sell your shit and and records, uh, you know, um, memorabilia, art. You know, if you paint, um, if you make, you know, clothing, if you, you know, bizarre. You know, a friend of mine who makes. Uh, uh, who makes her own, um, you know, leatherware is going to be there and, and, um, nice. you know, as well as some, some painters and, and, uh, um, you know, just some very, uh, some really, really cool stuff, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, been working on that. The first one's March 19th, San Pedro, downtown San Pedro. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it sounds fun. So thank you, you for co- taking this time. Do you collect? No, I'm not a collector. No. No. My my partner Jessica is though. She collects she collects lots of things. No, I'm like get it out. I don't I don't want it. I see it once and then I'm like it's and, someone else. And you know what I have to do that. I have to do that annually, you know, take stock <laughs> yeah. and just go, you know, all right, uh, you know, sh- some shit's got to go here, right? Right, and, right. And you know, we're not like I'm not like hoarder status, you know, to where there's just, yeah. you know, I can't walk through my room or, you know. Right. Um, I guess I collect art. I have, I have some art from Jesse Michaels and I, I have some art from some other, so punk rock artists is kind of what I'm starting to get into a little bit. Mm. But art doesn't feel like collecting to me, although I guess it is. I don't know why it just feels different, you know, but. Right. Now. I guess what is collecting, you know, what is the right. definition of collecting? I guess, I guess that's like, seeking out something <laughs> that that would go in a series maybe you know sure like a, co- well, I, a collection yes i have <laughs> right a collection I, I don't look at art that way either you know we, we we have stuff all over our walls and and we'll see shit that we like and it's like there's no theme to it you know there's no um series or it's more like oh this is like a bizarro woodcut you know from 1700s Sweet. or a local friend of ours who painted this like you know, bizarro, this is going up in the house. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And and there's no rhyme or reason to it other than if, if it's appealing to us, you know, on, on some inner level. Um, you didn't have, ask about my new band either. I know. I know. I meant to. Yes. <laughs> tell me, tell me about it. Shameless plug. It's on my, no, it's on my list. Shameless plug yeah. alert. Um, I got a new band with a friend of mine who was in England uh, called uh, Instant Ruin. And it's myself and my friend Gabba, who uh, plays guitar for a band called Chaos UK. You may or may not know. Um, and we've been, you know, working together for a lot of years. He was on an F minus album, uh, you know, years ago on the last F minus album, and he used to ride along on tours with us. And you know, one of the first people we met when when F minus started going over to to you know um, England in in the late nineties, and and. Uh, uh, but we, you know, we've been sending tracks back and forth, you know, throughout the whole pandemic. And it was like, Oh, nice. Well, you know, fuck it. We're going to just start a, a band, you know, yeah. and uh, a, a multi, uh, 
um, a, you know, a bi country band, I guess. Just and the two of you guys. It's just the two of us, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to go over to England in April and we're going to do a few dates out there. And it's going to be him and I, and <clears throat> my friend Dale is going to play guitar to another guy that, that we've known okay. out there for, you know, forever. And uh, it's yeah. going to be real bare bones, you know, just the three of us, you know, fucking laptop, guitar, and a, and a guy with a microphone. Yeah. And uh, um, we have some tracks up on Bandcamp. Um, and uh, I have a single, you know, at the plant, for, you know, seven inch being pressed <clears throat> of those songs. Um, and then a kid in Italy, uh, a, a kid, in, uh, this couple in Italy is going to uh, um, do a seven inch, another seven inch with us. Uh, both of those should be um, available. You know, who knows when, right? You know, the, right, the, right. the weight at the pressing yeah. plants is, is pretty long these days. So hopefully. That's by, what I hear. Yeah. Hopefully by the yeah. end, of, you know, by fall. Right. 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 Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so that's going on. And uh, nice. Um, what else? Any other big, exciting things? You know, I've been wanting to collab. There's a bunch of people I've been wanting to collaborate with musically. Um, yeah. You know, people here locally um, and we've talked about it, but I guess the, you know, the difficulty is finding the time, right. To do it, yeah. you know? So that's been the real struggle. I've, I've been anything but bored during, you know, any part of this pandemic or any part of the lockdown, you know, nice. it, it's been a, um, you know, I don't get bored. I don't, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. So. Um, I do. Do you? You do <laughs> not. I do a little bit. Yeah. I, I try to keep busy, but the pandemic was rough. It was, I was trying to, because I had to homeschool my kids for a while uh, and I have like PTSD from that. It was just terrible. And so I've been uh, really staying indoors and trying to stay healthy. And so, yeah, there's, it's been a little boring at times but see you're doing you know you're doing a podcast you know you're doing yeah. things right it, yeah it, yeah it takes some some uh i mean it, it was easy for me because i'm fucking insane you know and like i can just sit in like a darkened room and you know entertain myself <clears throat> with just what's yeah. going on in my head you know yeah for hours right um but uh, you know i have friends who who uh um have struggled as you struggle you know yeah and, and i think that what is it? It's just shifting gears, right? It's like, okay, yeah. well, you know, um, uh, you know, this and this isn't available. So what can you do with what's going on right now? Right. What's, in, right, what's right. in front of you, you know? Yeah. And I had all this motivation at the beginning of the pandemic. I like got art supplies and, you know, did, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to do all these cool things. And then by the end, I don't know, I just lost some steam a little bit. It's Sure. Yeah. But well, you know, are, are, are your kids back in school now? They are, yeah. thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Now what do you do with yeah. all the time? What do you do with all the extra time now? <laughs> work. I know. I know. Before I was working and homeschooling at the same time. Now yeah. I only have to work, which is kind of amazing. You, well, We let our guests pick a song for the end of the podcast. So can you think of a song that you're really digging these days that we should play? Oh, my God. Could be anything. I wish you'd have asked me that earlier. Um, um, um. <laughs> Some, Look at your phone and see what you're see what you're playing. Uh, let's see. What was the last thing that I listened to here? There are some new bands I really like. I got this um, a couple seven inches recently. One was by this band uh, um, called. I posted it on my Instagram called uh, uh, Child's Pose, who are um, oh just so great. Um, well, let's give them a plug. Let's. Shall we give them a plug? Totally. Here, hold on. I'll grab the seven inch. I don't know anything about them, really. Here's what the seven inch looks like. Okay. Um, it's called Eyes to the Right by Child's Pose. All I know is they're from England. And, and so, you know, it, it's like made up of members from, from some other bands. And one of the other bands I, I knew of that band, uh, they were called yeah. Wolf. <clears throat> Wolf, like... Uh, um, W O O uh L F and uh Okay. Um and this t totally reminds me of like um you know late seventies like angular jagged guitar, you know, like the slits or something and, and just you know um gang of four, like all of that shit that I love 
you know, of, yeah. of post punk type stuff. And, and, um, you know, it's four songs, but they're all just so fucking amazing. So, yeah. uh, you could play anything off of this, you know, um, sure. you know, maybe Lil Snitch is good. That's a good one. Okay. Um, okay. We'll do that. All right. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. He's a little snitch, a little snitch. He's a little snitch, a little snitch. Can't you say it rot quick? The little snitch. He come to tell you, the little snitch. Please smile. Johnny's got a secret And he's gonna tell it Johnny